Now, come the end of 2013, when these, when these uh, consoles launched, Microsoft did end up reversing their decision on everything, which thank God they did because who knows where they would be if they actually tried to follow through with all of those policies on their machine. All right, so I've been wanting to make this video for a while now, and I think now is a pretty good time to do it because as it stands right now for console sales, it doesn't really seem like much is going to drastically change in the next like year and a half, two years. It seems like where we're at right now is pretty much the scenario we're in right now where PS4 is winning quite handedly and Microsoft is having a really tough time moving units. So this video is going to be an entire breakdown and timeline and explanation of why Sony is doing so well and why Microsoft dropped the ball. So before we get into it, full disclaimer for anybody that's watching outside of this channel or something that, or that maybe doesn't know me, I really don't like the whole fanboy nonsense bullshit. So if you're some weird dude that gets an emotional attachment to a video game console, you know, then don't even bother watching because you're just, you're going to be weird about it. Um, this will be an entirely objective, factual video. I'm not going to lie about anything, certainly. Um, but this is going to be a full explanation of what actually has gone down and transpired over the years. And um, it's going to be good, all educational and whatnot. So a lot of people like to attribute it to maybe one or two things about, about Microsoft. Um, or maybe they attribute it to one or two things that Sony's doing particularly well. But I don't really think it's just one or two things I think it's a number of things and it's really the the start of the story really I think goes back to as early as 2010 which you might think whoa 2010 that's around PS3 360 yeah I think it starts around there now I think it starts around there because let's be honest uh 2010 is around the time that Sony was getting a little more traction with the PlayStation 3 um and this was also around the same time that Microsoft was really starting to get to refocus 360 and kind of a negative impact at the time of 2010, this is when Sony had already lowered the price of the PS3, they had a slimmer PS3 out on the market, and they were releasing a, a lot of their quality first party games on a consistent basis. It seemed like every single quarter um, of every year onward was uh, an exclusive game for PS3, and uh, the JRPG scene really started to explode on PS3. I mean, if you wanted to play some sort of obscure niche RPG, you were playing it on PS3. And this is at the same time where Microsoft was heavily pushing Kinect. They were heavily pushing family-oriented games, they were heavily pushing their exclusivity deals with Call of Duty map packs at the time, because that's when they still had that. Um, and they weren't really focusing on their first party. So a lot of people were getting a little getting a little sour on 360 at the time. And that's why ultimately at the end of that generation, Sony was able to catch up and even squeak by a few million units more than Xbox 360. But it's really, you know, minuscule at that point. They both pretty much ended around 82, 83, 83 million some odd units. But I think that's the important part of it because it's you know it's a it's a consumer mindset sort of thing. I mean, consumers are dumb, but they're also not dumb. I mean, people like to think about these things um, for a long time. They let it gestate, and certain things mean a lot to people when it comes to their buying habits and their buying decisions. So when you're in a situation in 2010 where you're tired of Microsoft maybe going in a weird direction, and you buy a PS3, you really enjoy their games for the next three years. Come 2013, you might start heavily considering buying a PS4 before an Xbox One and your decision will be even more heavily swayed once you see what happened with that situation. And so we all can probably remember going into the pre-release of X1 and PS4, Sony announced the PS4 and it was a two hour long conference um, talking about games, talking about the UI, the controller, what the system was going to be and why it was a, a system designed around developers because if developers aren't backing your system, you've got no hardware to begin with. Software is the soul of the hardware and that's kind of what they were preaching. And, you know, I think a lot of people enjoyed the conference, but they weren't really sure how they should, how well they could enjoy it because they weren't sure what Microsoft was doing. Because Sony went first. When Microsoft went, it was a much different story. Microsoft was on stage for about an hour, and they spent a lot of time talking about TV, EA Sports, and the next Call of Duty. And that, that went really south for the system, especially when they also were touting another Kinect camera that was going to be bundled with the system and it wasn't going to be unbundled with it. You had to get this camera with the system, which left a lot of people up in the air about, okay, well, how much is this thing going to cost now since you're bundling in a $100 camera probably? Then shortly after Microsoft's announcement is when it really went downhill because we all remember this. This is when Microsoft came out and said, we have anti-consumer policies put into our system. Of course, they didn't call it that themselves, but they had restrictions on used games. They had um, a DRM policy built into the system where it would check in online periodically. So it must've been, it, the system must be internet connected at all times. And of course, everybody was pretty damn pissed. And it didn't really help either because Microsoft had a bit of a PR disaster answering questions regarding this. 
So there'd always be a number of interviews of people asking, you know, oh, how does this work? How does this work? And there'd be cl conflicting reports and we wouldn't have any solid idea of how the system in place would work. And it was just really bad. You'd have to figure there was some major restructuring internally at Microsoft after that ordeal, or definitely certainly some firings. Um, I know the one guy got fired. God, I can't remember his name. Adam Orth, I think, or something. He used to be with Microsoft and he made some crazy tweet and then he got fired for it. Or he left Microsoft on his own accord. I don't remember. That was a while ago. But this didn't help. What didn't help even more was E3 2013. Because this is a really big turning point for the console. Again, keep in mind, this is that consumer mindset thing. Starting from 2010 up to this point, it seems pretty clear most people are going to be going with PS4. E3 didn't help Microsoft's case either. When Sony publicly on stage took this opportunity to attack Microsoft and say, PS4 will not require used game, or will not um, be against used games, and it does not uh, require an online connection. For instance, PlayStation 4 won't impose any new restrictions on the use of PS4 gamers. When a gamer buys a PS4 disc, they have the rights to use that copy of the game. They can trade in the game at retail, sell it to another person, lend it to a friend, or keep it forever. If you enjoy playing single player games offline, PS4 won't require you to check in online periodically. Meanwhile, at Microsoft show, um, they showed a lot of cool stuff, a lot of good games, but it's just, it's funny, you know, because there was so much animosity in that room and everybody watching online, because as you're watching the conference the whole time, you're thinking, yeah, but the system is going to be really anti-consumer. And at the end of the conference, they announced the price tag, $500. Pretty steep. Um, and it's even more steep when you consider later on we find out that the system is less powerful than the PS4 So you're paying more money for a camera you don't want and for a lesser box in terms of hardware Sony was announced uh, Sony had uh, announced their price at E3 $400. It's pretty much a done deal. A lot of consumers have made up their mind Now come the end of 2013 when these system, when these uh, consoles launch Microsoft did end up reversing their decision on everything which thank God they did because who knows where they would be if they actually tried to follow through with all of those policies on their machine. It would be drastically different today, but it was too little too late. Um, now the systems actually both launched very well. They sold extremely well actually, outsold the rate of sale from their previous counterparts and did so for many more months to come. It's just that PS4 did a hell of a lot better. And it's the first year of PS4 and X1 that was also pretty telling about why most consumers were still picking PS4 over Xbox One. And that was mostly because of games performance. You would have every single third party game coming out and chances are it either had a, a higher frame rate or a higher resolution on PlayStation 4. And despite the fact that Sony actually had a bit of a slow going with their first party games, PS4 actually had a bit of a slow, you know, year and a half, two years until their titles started to come out. But that didn't really sway, you know, bother people because, let's face it, you still had plenty of third party games on the system um, and you were getting better performance out of them and you paid less for the system to begin with. Microsoft had done so many other things in the past that really didn't sit well with people. Things like Xbox Live being a uh, Xbox Live Gold being a requirement, and then putting streaming services behind that paywall, which is something they did for a long time. And slowly over the years, you can see Microsoft try to, you know, rebuild the dike on this one. They removed the paywall for the streaming apps. They took out the camera. They lowered the price of the box. Today, we're introducing a new Xbox One without Connect for $399. Yeah, there's a lot about Kinect that I really love. But we've also heard from people that they just like to play games with controller in their hand and they play multiplayer through Xbox Live. And that's the thing too. These are all good things. Microsoft did a really great job. Backwards compatibility is something they were heavily working on for a while. Thank God they released that. that was an, that's an awesome feature. It's great for consumers and it's something Sony isn't doing. Um, but it's just like too little too late because now it's the market has clearly dictated what most people want and you can see it because they're tr they're doing so many positive things i mean who wouldn't want to buy an awesome video game machine after all those things get added to the machine it's great i mean they've ev are even you know a big supporter of cross network play um you can see where they're trying to move xbox forward but those things came out all in succession of their constant fail failings of trying to move units and catch up with Sony. 
because in an ideal world, if Microsoft was actually uh, selling plenty of Xbox Ones and beating Sony, you could probably assume that a lot of those things would still be in place today, possibly. Um, but it also has to do a lot with the restructuring of Microsoft internally. This is when Don Matrick left and Phil Spencer took uh, took over head of Xbox. And I'm sure Phil was uh, at the forefront of a, lot of, of a lot of these positive changes, but it may be because he was put there to do those in the first place to try and move units. Um, Either way, I mean, I'm, another example, Xbox Live Games with Gold. I mean, let's face it, this was a direct response to PlayStation Plus. I think another thing a lot of people probably thought of back then is like, well, if I'm buying a PS4 or an Xbox One, I got to play online because Sony at the time was finally requiring PlayStation Plus to play online games on PS4. Most consumers are probably sitting there going, well, I might as well go with PS4 because I'm going to get free games with it too. Then comes Games with Gold. So, um... You know, it's a, it's a, Microsoft was very reactionary and they did a, a fantastic job, but it was just too little too late. And so that's really where we're at right now. Um, I mean, so if you look at current sales right now, PS4 is sitting at about 76 million systems as of filming this video. Um, and Microsoft, we actually don't have official numbers. They just don't release them. And that's, well, pretty obvious why they don't. But they're figured to be around 35 million some odd units. So Sony has about a two to one lead which is pretty massive. I mean, in certain territories, Sony outsells them three to one. Um, Japan, that's like a free market for Sony, which, cause you know, Microsoft's essentially non-existent there. But yeah, it's it's, it's definitely pretty rough for them. Um, it'll be interesting to see where we go moving forward in the next generation of consoles, how Sony will handle their lead, um, how Microsoft will, will try to do something a little bit different. I mean, their current strategy with unifying Windows and Xbox, that's certainly for a different video since it's a little polarizing and some people think it's, deem it to almost make Xbox an irrelevant platform at that point. But again, that's that's for a later video. Um, but, you know, a lot of it was Microsoft probably coming off the heels of their, their su success with 360. Despite the fact that even PS3 catched up, they probably thought, well, we still get, you know, most third-party games still outsell the PS3 version. Um, we, pro you know, we have tons of dedicated Xbox Live Gold members. Um, people have all their gamer score on there, their gaming circles. They probably just figured everybody would migrate over. Much like Sony thought people would migrate over from PS2 to PS3. Sony learned the hard way, and it looks like Microsoft learned the hard way. And it does suck for Microsoft because they have done a lot of good things recently. But now their current problem is a bit of a first party issue. Um, and in terms of the mid-cycle mid consoles, PS4 Pro, Xbox One X, they're for the most part not really necessary to this conversation. I don't really like when people bring them up and, and say, oh, PS4 Pro is going to sell more PS4s or X1X is going to revitalize Xbox One X. Don't be ridiculous. They're low volume machines um, and the market's already dictating that. I mean, one in every five PS4s is is a PS4 Pro. They're mostly still base models. I'd assume Microsoft's probably seeing the same number now that they've leveled out a little bit after the holidays and the initial release. Um, it's a low volume machine, so not, not you know, can't really expect much out of those, but yeah, it'll be interesting for sure to see what'll happen once these machines come out in possibly 2019 or 2020. You know, we'll have to wait and see. But that's it. That's pretty much all I got for you guys. So hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all in my next video. Take it easy.